still more than that. Well, I'm here again. <laughs> Woo! And when you have experienced 
my mercy and my grace beyond anything you could believe or expect I'm still more than that look at your neighbor and tell them our God is holy tell them that doesn't mean he's boring and that doesn't mean he's snooty that means there's nobody like him in heaven or earth clap your hands and bless him if you believe it Father, we give praise and honor to you. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have qualified us that we might boldly approach your throne. Thank you for your word and its integrity. It is your word by which we have come and get to know you. Thank you for your spirit. You promised that the Holy Spirit would not only be with us, but in us. And then you said that he would lead us into truth. Thank you for that today. And we thank you for your people, for they are your inheritance in the earth, individual by individual, person by person. Now bless, favor, strengthen, increase, encourage, illuminate, grant answers, solutions, directions, and clarity. And I pray again that you would perfume the saints with the spirit of victory, that we might be reminded that you have conquered, and therefore we are more than conquerors through you that have loved us. Thank you in advance for everything said and done in your name. And the people said, Amen. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and thank the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God bless you and you may be seated in the presence of the living Jesus. And we thank God for each of you person by person, individual by individual. We bless you once again in Jesus' name. And we remind you that God is up to great things concerning you. Look at your neighbor and tell them you are blessed and highly favored. Oh, come on, talk stronger than that. Tell them you are blessed and highly favored. Tell them as a matter of fact, you're very blessed to be anywhere near me today. Remind them I am God's anointed and anything good can happen near me. Clap your hands once more if you agree. God bless you. We greet you in the strong name of Jesus. And to those of you that are watching us and joining us live stream, by live stream again, we thank God for you. And uh, I know that you have been encouraged already uh, to stay connected. And again, if you are not a part of our prophetic e-community, I want to encourage you to get connected. I, 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 my, my ministers and pastors often say it. But I want to remind you that once you connect, you know, we've got people who connect with this anointing around the world every single week. Thousands of people watch and receive the word of God. And once you connect, it empowers us to begin to pray for you on another level and communicate with you on another level. And uh, I'm, I'm, there's some things the Spirit of the Lord is leading me to share with all of you that are part of our prophetic e-community as we go into 2024. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't connected, just go to bishopmclennan.com. doesn't cost you anything, and you will get connected. And as I often say, although it doesn't cost you anything, the connection is going to be invaluable in your life. One word from God can change everything. Thank you for the seven of you that agree with that. I said one word from God can change anything and everything. Now, all, also, I know that you have been advised already of the holiday schedule as this is the first Sunday in the month of December. Look at your neighbor say, it's almost over. 2023 is almost over. Good night. This is the first Sunday in the year 2023. And of course, this is not only the final month of our calendar year, the Gregorian calendar, but then again, there are often uh, various things that occur. It 
holidays and celebrations. So I know they rehearsed with you that schedule. I just want to reiterate, of course, this this year, both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are on Sunday. Uh, so that's a unique thing. I, I guess that only happens, what, every seven years or eight years? I, I'm a prophet, not a mathematician, so y'all can figure it out. But anyway, so uh, again, Christmas Eve at the Place of Grace, that Sunday, we will have our regular worship experience but that experience will be more musical than word-based that's going to be more of our celebratory aspect of worship we will spend it in worship i'll say something but i'm not going you know try to preach an entire message there there'll be special music and other things oh no 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 because the christmas message is going to be on christmas day that's when i do the christmas message and so you say bishop we coming on christmas day yep we, we, we are, and, and if you don't come, I'll be here by myself screaming into the camera telling somebody uh, about what the, the Lord has given me to say on that day. So again, uh, that service, again, we are very, very good at getting that service in and out at a specific time, and we encourage you on Christmas Day before you give a gift to anyone, make sure you give the gift of worship and thanksgiving to the Lord Jesus. We know, amen, you can clap your hands for that. We know, we know, and so somebody said, well, when that ain't his birthday, well, he was born, okay? And here's what we celebrate, whether it's his birthday or not, we commemorate his birth on that day, you know? Look at your neighbor and say, your taxes ain't all straight on April 15th either, but you, but, but anyway, so, so, so that's the day that we have determined to do uh, that celebration. And so it will be on Christmas Day. That service will be prompt, 10.30 to noon. That's when I generally share the message that God has given me for Christmas. And then our New Year's Eve, the Renaissance, uh, that evening, 9.30, that morning, I will simply share with you again that evening will be one of our first uh, 3D worship experiences as we go into 2024. That's what the Spirit of the Lord placed upon our hearts. And so during the day, I'm going to give you in the morning session. So there'll be two sessions that day, the morning and the evening. We'll be prompt once again in the morning. I'm going to share with you two or three things the Spirit of the Lord has uh, said that you and I need to be mindful of and aware of as we go into 2024. The Lord's already been speaking to me about the significance of 2024 and what it will mean not only for this house but for the people of God globally and thereby uh, I believe the impact on the nations of the earth you don't want to miss it but it will be concise and then going in to the evening so that is the schedule we'll give it to you in a bit more of a succinct way but we want you to be aware of it grab your neighbor's hand squeeze it tight and say be prepared <laughs> Be prepared to worship with us during those events. Turn with me very quickly in your Bibles to uh, Psalm 112, the 112th Psalm. If you'll turn there with me, I want to read uh, a couple of verses from Psalm 112, uh, specifically verses number 7 and 8. Of course, on the first Sunday of every month, we pray over our Psalm 112 covenant partners. You say, what is a Psalm 112 covenant partner? Those are men and women who, in addition to their tithe, their, their seed, their regular giving, on the first Sunday of every, of every month, so a $112 seed. Dr. Mike Murdoch, a man of God that has been mightily used in the kingdom of God in sharing with God's people his wisdom, especially his wisdom concerning financial breakthrough and prosperity. How many of you know Dr. Mike Murdoch? How many of you, he's ever been a blessing to you in your life? Yeah, he, God has used him. And several years ago, he came to the place of grace and shared this 112 covenant. And I'll never forget 
as he spoke there prophetically he said that God was going to raise up through this ministry entrepreneurs business people people with vision in various aspects of industry and was going to prosper them from that day to this God has done that there are men and women amongst us who are in that service that are millionaires and multi-millionaires today look at your neighbor and say you may be sitting next to one you may not you better know and God has raised them up you say now wait a minute you say wait a minute again that doesn't mean uh, that not everyone has aspect to the blessing of God not everyone is going to be a millionaire uh, some of us are going to be billionaires no not everyone is going not everyone is going to be a millionaire amen but I believe God desires that his people prosper his word says so and again prosperity the word literally means to do good along the way so prosperity is not a destination it's a process and it's progress look at your neighbor and ask them are you progressing boy you're quiet in here today look at your neighbor and say are you progressing yeah see prosperity is to have enough and something left over and so I remember when I found out in my 20s that God wanted me to prosper and I often say I was I've always been somewhat of an overachiever so when I was broke I was extremely broke you understand I achieved brokenness in special ways it was I, I was supernaturally broke I mean I had uh, and, and when I found out that it was God's will to prosper me I got into God's word and I found out how he does it God is a God of order and structure did you hear what I just said uh, and, and he operates by principle did you did you get what I just said he operates by principle people say wait, wait the Lord God moves in mysterious way no he doesn't God is not mysterious he has disclosed his ways in his word are you in the room uh, you know I often say what father wants to be spooky to his children what, what, what father wants to be you know well, you never know what I'm going to do I, mean, I, don't, I don't want no daddy either. you'll never know what I'm going to do I'd like to know what you're going to do you understand I, I'd like to have some degree of confidence and trust and so God through his word has done that and there are principles and so uh, one of the things we do every first Sunday we pray over those men women business people entrepreneurs if you're watching you want to become a part of our 112 covenant all you got to do is let us know and we will continue to pray with you and for you for God is doing what he said so as we worship God in our tithe our sowing however you sow those who are, are a part of that 112 covenant sow that seed from their business from their vision from their dream from their aspiration and look at your neighbor and say God is doing exactly what he promised he's prospering so again Psalm 112 the beginning of it it begins with blessed is the man who fears the Lord again that means to reverence God who delights greatly in his commandments that literally means his word and as I often say you cannot honor God and dishonor his word for God and his word are one therefore when you honor God's word you are honoring God say amen to that now look go down to it, it talks about various aspects of this individual who fears the Lord or who reverences God it doesn't mean is afraid of him it says his descendants will be mighty on the earth the generation of the upright will be blessed what they generate will be blessed wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever now I like the way the psalmist put that he said wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness will be intact in other words he says the man or woman who walks with God will prosper without being wicked uh, without compromise with without cutting corners to do it without stabbing backs or sleeping your way to the top God says I will prosper you ain't nobody saying nothing to me and your righteousness remain intact look at your neighbor and say God will do it 
So look at your other neighbor and say, so when I begin to prosper, uh, don't think I'm a thief. It, it's, so, it's so interesting. God's word says this, but whenever a man or woman of God starts prospering, there he go, taking a, t- taking a, no, 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 no. God prospers his people who will honor his word. Now watch this. Look at verse number seven. It says, this individual who honors the Lord or reverences God, watch this, will not be afraid of evil tidings. In other words, when things vacillate in the world around them, they will not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? His heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord that that word in Hebrew is batak it literally means to be confident to be sure to be without care in other words it says the heart of this individual will be without care they it, it doesn't mean they won't care the heart of the individual won't be moved with information with situation with circumstance have you ever seen someone or have you ever been the someone who's in a situation and the stuff around you looks like you should be freaking out and you're not I don't know if that's ever happened to you I've actually been in situations where it's like I get outside of myself and look and think I really should be scared right now but I'm not you know why my heart is fixed I want you to get this I want you to get what God says look at your neighbor say principle No, they didn't hear you. Look at the other neighbor. Say, principle. God has designed a way for you to fix your heart. Well, you didn't get it. When I say fix it, I don't mean repair it. I mean, he has designed a way for you to make it steadfast. Are you still here? Watch this. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord look at verse 8 his heart is established and when I read that I was reminded of Matthew 6 go there go to Matthew 6 19 when his, his heart is established in other words his heart doesn't move it doesn't vacillate are you there doesn't stay up all night wondering how it's gonna work out touch your neighbor say go to bed watch this look at Matthew 6 19 through 23 it says do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal you know crazy people can misinterpret anything when the Bible says do not lay up for yourself treasure it doesn't mean don't have a savings account it doesn't mean don't have uh, you know uh, that It, it means do not trust in financial prosperity watch this but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal watch this for where your treasure is there your heart will be also where your treasure is your heart will be God has given the son and daughter of the kingdom the opportunity to place their heart in the right place. Y'all aren't hearing me. In an unmovable place. Here is what God is saying. When you honor me with your substance, when you honor me with your giving, I will never forget years ago when I was reading this, I literally saw in a very uh, uh, fundamental vision it was very low level but i was reading and i saw a cord connected from my finances to my heart i was i was reading the word and i saw a cord connected from my finances to my heart and wherever my money went my heart went and the spirit of y'all aren't hearing me and the spirit of the lord said son this is how it is he says whatever you invest your money your heart will go look at your neighbor say principle he says if you invest in my kingdom your heart will stay there 
Y'all aren't hearing what I'm saying. If you invest in my kingdom, your heart will stay there and I will manage it. You don't have to try to be at peace. You don't, you don't have to try to be unshakable and unmovable. Are, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I have found it to be true. And then that reminded me, because the word of God goes together, line up on line, precept up on precept. That reminded me of Philippians 4, 7, where it says, be anxious for but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God watch this and the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your heart oh and your mind in the anointed Jesus and in his anointing that's what Christ means so, so I learned grab your neighbor's hand squeeze it tight I learned when it comes to my financial need the management of my heart is not mental it is spiritual Whew. did you hear did you hear what I just said squeeze your neighbor's hand tight and tell him I'm gonna squeeze this into you today the management, I learned the management of my heart is not mental. It is spiritual. It's not based on me trying to be at peace. Have you ever tried to be at peace? Look at your name and say, you have not succeeded at that often, have you? No, no because you can't maintain your peace. It takes a power greater than yours to maintain your peace. Look at your name and say, nothing will shake you in the next 30 days. Nothing will move you in the next 30 days. You will be confident that your God has made a way. And you will see it in this month. Look at your other neighbor that you will not be shaken in heart or mind. The Spirit of God is going to manage your heart. Now God said this to me while I was praying for you. He said, son, there is a seed that positions, establishes, and fixes the heart in place he says from time to time I'll tell my people to sow a seed that is to fix the heart I need somebody to hear me I need someone he said from time to time and that's why sometimes God will tell you to sow something beyond what you were thinking about sowing it's a seed to fix the heart meaning to plant it because God are you all here because God knows what's coming and he knows what information might shake you. Lay your hand on yourself. Now, Lord, I understand why you were ministering this to me this morning. I remember I, the Lord brought this up to me this morning while I was meditating in the Word. And, and when David desired to build God a house... God said, no, you, you won't build my house. You, you've been a man of war, a man of blood. He said, your son is going to build my house, Solomon, because he will be a man of peace. I will give peace in Solomon's time. I'll never forget, I was reading that years ago, and the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, my house is only built in peace. He said, my, my house is not built by fighting and striving. It's only built at peace. Now, remember, you are the house of God. You are God's tabernacle. In other words, God says, I can only edify you, strengthen you, build you when you're at peace. This is why a lot of people, they get out of stuff, but they never get over stuff. I'm... I'm, I'm I'm going to say it again. They get out of stuff, but they never get over stuff. 
and the same thing will come to them again because they got out of it but they didn't grow over it lay I feel the Holy Ghost would you lay your hand up on yourself and say God is building me to get over stuff not just out of it to rule and have dominion over it I will not be moved by evil tidings I will not be moved by economic concerns my way is made my need is met my heart is fixed trusting in the Lord lift your hand everywhere if you're watching me live me lift your hand because the Spirit of the Lord commissioned me to pray for you I don't just come up with this stuff I ask God about your life and your business and your prosperity and mine and he said to me I'm gonna fix hearts I'm gonna establish them Now that doesn't mean bad news is coming are you still here see when your heart is fixed prosperity can't ruin you either boy I wish I had see some people's success will ruin are y'all here the Bible says the prosperity of a fool will destroy him in other words if you don't know how to maintain it it'll destroy you this is what Paul meant when he said, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. I know when I'm lacking, my heart is fixed. And when I got more than enough, my heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every individual under the sound of my voice. I pray specifically over my 112 covenant partners, over their businesses, their visions, their dreams, their aspirations, their enterprises. I pray for supernatural favor. I pray for the business meetings and the negotiations they will come into that they, they are brought before men and women that will show them favor. I declare in Jesus name visions and dreams are manifesting projects books CDs ventures I decree they are prospering as your sons and daughters put their trust not in men but in you and my father as we sow today whether it be the 112 uh, the tithe the, the first fruit some you've already increased a prophet seed however they give I decree in the name of Jesus through this month supernatural rest and peace confidence is theirs in the name of Jesus and the people who agreed said it is so say amen now look at your neighbor and say do what the Spirit of God tells you to do if you're watching me live streaming as we prepare to so I want you to get in on this as well right there on your computer screen right there on your smartphone there's a donate button there's a way for you to sow I want you to do what the Spirit of God has directed you to do if you're a tither you know what to do I'm a tither and a tenth of everything that comes to me I bring to the Lord but maybe uh, God has already prospered you in some way and you want to bring a first fruit to say thank you maybe you're sowing in the prophet seed however you're sowing I want you to do it in faith looking to your source somebody say amen right there on your computer screen there's a donate button you can click that and so or you can text and give somebody say text give you can text CEMM to 41444 just follow the prompts and give as God has directed you now there's a number on your screen 310-323-2600 I'm talking to you 310-323-2600 I've got trained prayer ministers ready to agree with you listen if you never sow anything we're gonna pray for you our prayers are free and God's power works supernaturally but the Bible teaches that there is something that happens when people mix their faith and their giving Acts chapter 10 talks about it read it when you get a chance whatever you do there are trained prayer ministers ready to agree with you 310-323-2600 thank you master call that number on the screen somebody's listening to me right now and you're dealing with a situation you're troubled I mean I can literally see you trouble 
you've got trouble in the house trouble with one of your children you're believing God for something I encourage you call the number 310-323-2600 and do what God has directed you to do in Jesus name amen if you've got the Bishop McClendon app you can give that way if you don't have it you can download it from iTunes or from Google and give that way where are my givers in the house let me see are you a giver if you're making out a check make it payable to CEMM Clarence E. McClendon Ministries if you're giving cash use the envelope if you desire to do this on a bank or credit card I've got magnificent people in the aisle ready to assist you with a smile smile people in the aisle ready to assist you amen so go and do that and let's give with joy as unto the Lord amen hallelujah
neighbor and tell him it's yours. Take it back. Hallelujah. Woo! Hey! neighbor and say, now you may not understand this because maybe you never lost anything or maybe you never had anything stolen from you and maybe you were never in a situation where it looked like you were not coming out of it. But let me testify a minute. I've been in some stuff. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been in some stuff that nobody but God could have gotten me out of. Look at your other and say, I've been in some stuff that only the Lord could recover for me. So give me about 60 seconds and let me praise it. You got 60 seconds. Go for what you know. Hey. say something. Grab your neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor. No, I need you to talk to them. Grab your neighbor's hand. Say, neighbor. The Bible says that refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord when you and I repent. That doesn't just mean from sin. It means change your mind. Look at your neighbor. Say, something supernatural is about to happen in your circumstance. Change your mind. Look at your neighbor and say, just because it looks bad, doesn't mean it's going to stay bad. Change your mind. Find somebody that just because the devil said it's over, doesn't mean it's over. Change your mind. And thank God and watch the refreshing come. Look. I just heard the Spirit of the Lord say, a refreshing is coming from my... You're going to end the year strong. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey!
of the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Yes! He forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Mandanabo eshate. Hamela la boca. Yishanda la boca. Mandanabo esha. Maya ya eh. Ella la bo esha. Ella borra kataya esha. Sandal ella borra ka. Lay your hand up on somebody near you. Tell them there's a fresh wind coming on you. You go outrun the chariot. Ella bo. You go outrun the trouble. You go to outrun the adversary. There ya. My God. Refresh. Re eh. Hey. 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 Be strengthened in your spirit. Strengthened in your mind. Strengthened in your will. Strengthened in your emotions. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power. Ayah Baba Kata. Of Ayah Eshata. Elabo of his might. Elabore aya. Hey. Elabore asha. Manta la boca. Miste. Shande la boca. Hey. Neka to me. Esha. Hey. Woo. Spirit of the living God. Elabore da. Lay your hand up on somebody. Watching me live streaming, lift your hands where you are. If there's somebody near you, lay your hand upon them. If you're watching me live streaming, if somebody near you, 
Lay your hand on them if you're by yourself. Lift your hands where you are. The Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Master. Kalaburavasha, yes, God, I'll do it, is moving here. If you're in this room, lay your hand on someone close to you. Thank you, Master. I was... There are times as a man of God where you know you have something prepared but you also know something is on the mind of the spirit the Bible says a man plans his way but the Lord directs his steps the scripture again declares the horse is prepared for the day of battle but the victory comes from the Lord and so there are times you're prepared and I've been teaching in a series and I, I've got to finish the series but this morning as I was preparing I, I felt an uneasiness in my spirit as if I know what's prepared but I don't think that's what's about to happen Lay your hand on your brother, your sister. And all this week, thank you, Master. All this week, I, I felt like a heaviness. I felt a, I don't know, it was, it was like being stuck in mud, grinding in mud. It was, it was as if you had desire to do stuff, but not the energy to do it or the strength to do it and after a day or two I said God is this me and I mean I know I need to go somewhere and rest but it's me he said no son he said something is happening in the spirit and then he said to me he said there's a refreshing coming there's a refreshing coming up on my people he said and that's why I'm changing minds about things. God, that's why I'm showing you different things in the word. I'm changing your understanding about some things because the refreshing can't come without a change of mind. See, the word repent, metanoeo, it doesn't just mean from sin. The word means again to think or to think again. The word repent literally means you think you know, but I'm about to change how things are done. So when the Bible says John came preaching a baptism of repentance, the Greek there is actually a baptizo in metanoeo. He came immersing people in the spirit of being able to shift gears with God. Do you hear what I just said? Do you understand what I just said? He came releasing an anointing that would enable people once they heard him to shift gears into what God was getting ready to do. See, when John came, there was an entire ritual in Israel for how sins were to be dealt with. You had to bring a lamb, you had to bring a turtle dove, you had to bring an animal, you had to bring this, you had to go to the temple, you had to do this. John came preaching, this whole thing's about to shift. And the Lamb of God is coming. And if you'll hear what I'm telling you, John was saying, the rest of your walk with God, watch this, is going to be easier than you think. <laughs> that's why Jesus came and said take my yoke and learn from me my yoke is easy and my burden is 
like lay your hand upon your neighbor and so the Lord said to me and, and, and then these words I'm just going to say what he said and, and be done then I kept hearing these words he said order 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 I said God what do you mean order he said I am a God of order he said I am about to bring things in order for this next move of my spirit there is a new order in your life in your discipline in my church in how things are done and I kept hearing the Holy Spirit saying order 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 God is a God of order and you'd be amazed what he does once things get in order once, once a thing is in order, it's easier. Once a thing is in order, it's almost like you don't have to do anything. You just watch him do stuff. Hey, and the Lord was dealing with deal me about my own life. That's why some of you have been in some unrest and discomfort. You've sort of felt stuck in the mud because your previous order is antiquated. I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was good for where it got you, but it won't take you where you're going. I feel the spirit of the living Jesus. And, and, and he said, so, so, so many times there, you, there's, a, there's a season of unrest when God is doing that in the spirit because you're loosing the familiar and grabbing the unknown. I've, all, I've, all, I've often said, God does not lead from one level of order to the next level of order. He leads you from order to chaos to order. And in your chaos, you discover the principles of the new order. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him you haven't lost it. Tell them you're not crazy. Tell them God has not left you. There's a new order. He's establishing in you. He hasn't left you alone. He's right there. Establishing a new order. You've been praying from 7 to 8 a.m. And now you're going to pray from 9 to 11 p.m. Just a new order. I don't know who I'm talking to. You... <laughs> Your, your, your Bible study time isn't working out anymore and God's about to shift you. You may not get an hour every day. You may get three hours one day. Are you there? Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and tell them God will consistently break your ritual so that you are never trusting in it but always trusting in him once you get a thing down then he'll break it up and say now here's the new order because I'm not going to let you trust your prayer life I'm not going to let you trust your study life I'm not going to let you trust your consecration I'm not going to let you trust your fasting schedule you're going to trust my spirit I feel the Holy Ghost and do what he tells you to do lay your hand on your brother lay your hand on your sister and I heard the spirit of the Lord say and I was, and he was dealing with me this on the way in the car in the car on the way here And he kept saying, order, order, order. I'm establishing another order. He said, and tell the people if they'll just shift with me. Just let me do it. They're going to find it easy. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, you are going to finish strong. Tell them that. Tell them, you're going to finish this year strong. Tell them. No, 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 no. Look at your neighbor and say, you are going in to next year with a fresh wind kicking in your sails.
lay your hand upon yourself. And for those of you who felt stuck in the mud, felt like you just can't get going, can't get moving, can't get the Spirit of God is about to start blowing at your heels and propelling you forward. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. But how does it come? Repent. Metanoeo. Change your mind. Are you there? I said, are you there? Lay your hands upon yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over every individual under the sound of my voice, whether they are hearing this live or whether they hear it later on, every person for whom this word and this anointing and this wind of the Spirit is ordained in the name of Jesus, I declare not only do they receive it, but they walk in it. I declare in Jesus' name a refreshing in your spiritual vitality. A refreshing in your will, in your mind, in your emotions. I declare the Spirit of God is almost like He's going to come in and take the wheel and say, Okay, let me drive from here. I'm going to drive you across the finish line. And into your next dimension of glory. Say it out loud. Say, I am moving from one level of faith to another level of faith I am moving from one dimension of glory to another dimension of glory this has been ordained for me in this season and I shall walk in it in the name of Jesus I lift up both of those hands say Lord I receive the refreshing from your presence. Woo! Say, oh Lord, I receive the order for my next. In the name of Jesus, and I declare, as you lead me, I will follow. Lay your hands upon yourself. I'm done today. Lay your hands upon yourself. I had something to teach. I'll pick it up next week. Lay your hands upon yourself. See, even what I'm teaching is the establishment of a new order. God was dealing with all that. And those of you that were with me on in prayer on Friday night, the Lord just said to me as I was over here, He said, This is a residual from, from the prayer of Friday night. This, this, that anointing was still flowing in you. Lay your hands on yourself. The Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know that I was prepared, but you also are the one in charge here. <laughs> I work for you and my job is not to do what I have prepared but to follow the leading of your spirit and I trust you master that everything your sons and daughters need for this day and this week is being ministered to them by the Holy Spirit Take these words and lead them further into truth. I pray all this week that your prompting, your bidding, your voice, your witness, that you will grant them supernatural sensitivity to it. For you said your sheep know your voice and the voice of strangers they will not follow. Say this out loud after me. Say, I will hear 
Say it again. I will hear. I will know. I will follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. I will not follow strange voices, but I will follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Say it with strength. I am one of his sheep and I know his voice. Lay your hands upon your <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. In a borayan. Woo. Excuse me, that was <laughs> that was my own personal time there. Lay your hand upon yourself. You're watching me live streaming. There is no time or distance in the spirit realm. The God who is present here is present there. The spirit of God is ministering. Many of you sense, you feel, you witness that anointing. Thank you, Master. Thank you, man. Yes, Lord. Yes, I will do it. Lay your hands upon yourself. I want my ushers to get ready. I want you to hear me and hear me very clearly. As surely as I am standing here, as I was prepared to minister, I sensed the Spirit of God moving. And when he ministered to me, a few moments ago when the move of the spirit began he just said follow me follow me follow me lay your hands upon yourself <sighs> now the spirit of God has said things in the last 10-15 minutes some of them I said by the spirit others as I was speaking as his spirit was moving he spoke to you Many of you had impressions, thoughts that came through your mind, situations appeared, circumstances that you are dealing with. And I have the witness of the Spirit, hear me, that while you and I were worshiping here, the Spirit of God was fixing something somewhere else for you. Uh, this is not just talk. Remember, the scripture has more than one example of when an individual was in the presence of Jesus, worshiping, speaking, declaring. And while they were in Jesus' presence, a miracle was happening at their house. The centurion came and he said, my servant is at home. He said, but you don't need to come. Just speak a word only and my servant would be healed. The centurion was in Jesus' presence. The sick person was at the house. But while the centurion was worshiping and declaring in the presence of Jesus, a miracle was happening at the house. Would you look at somebody and tell them a miracle's happening at the house? No, no, no. Find somebody else and tell them, I don't, woo, I don't know where your circumstance is. But wherever it is, while you're here worshiping, the Spirit of God is moving over there. The Bible says one day a man came to Jesus. You've heard me say this many times, but I sense it in my spirit. man came to Jesus and said my son he was a nobleman the Bible says, my son's at home he's about to die Jesus said except you see signs and wonders you will not believe he said go your way your son lives the son was at the house man was in the presence of Jesus the Bible says when the man was on his way home 
one of his servants met him from the house and said, you will not believe this. Your son is well. I love this story. Rather than just jump and shout, they'll put it up on the screen. I think it's in Mark 6, 7. I love this story because instead of jumping and shouting, the Bible says the man asked him, what hour did he begin to get well? And the Bible says the servant from his house said, yesterday about such and such a time. And the scripture says, and the man knew that it was at the same hour that he was with Jesus a miracle was happening over there. I feel the power of God. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him while you're worshiping him, something supernatural is happening where you need it to happen. I don't know who I'm talking to. God wants you to know you don't have to be there to fix it. That's it, John 4, 43. Read it some more when you get home. Lay your hand upon you. If you're watching me live streaming, goodness, if you're watching me live streaming, if you're here, I want you to lay your hands on yourself. Close your eyes. I want every person under the sound of my voice that knows beyond the shadow of any doubt the Spirit of God has been moving in your midst not of human contrivance or of natural manipulation but the Holy Spirit has witnessed to you something shifted something happened I want every one of you thank you master under this miracle anointing to hear me this anointing is waking up with you tomorrow This anointing is going to be in your car on the way home. It's, it's going to walk into your place of business with you. It's, it's going to meet you at your meeting or your negotiation. I want every person under the sound of my voice who believes that God is is ministering to us. I want you to do something. And I want you to get a seed and I want you to sow it into this anointing and into this moment. Now hear me. Hear me. Everybody say the word principle. See, this is one of the things that God's word teaches and his people need to understand. God is a God of principle. He's a God of order. Supernatural things don't just happen. Wherever something supernatural occurs, someone somewhere has acted on the word of God, has put into operation a principle of God. There are times when the Spirit of God does something and the Holy Spirit will direct those who are involved to do something to mark the moment. When Jacob falls asleep, at Luz and he has that dream, that revelation that the Spirit of God is flowing with him and he, the Bible says he woke up, changed the name of the place from Luz to Bethel and then he poured out oil at that spot, literally saying this, this right here was a moment of shift and change. When the children of Israel crossed the Jordan under Joshua's reign into Canaan, God says, before you go on, I want you to go back and get 12 stones from the Jordan and take them and put them on the land as a memorial. In other words, he said, I want you to mark this. Paul teaches in the book of Galatians that when you and I have been ministered to by the word of God, by the spirit of God, he says, let us communicate. That's why here at the place of grace, this is not a manipulation. This is not a formality. This is an act of faith. Once the Spirit of God has spoken to us and ministered to us, we sow something 
into that word, into that moment. Why? The Bible says that when you do that, Galatians teaches, when you're taught or imparted of the Spirit of God, he said, he that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap eternal life. That doesn't mean salvation there. The words are ayaneia zoe, unstoppable life. In other words, God's word says, when the Spirit of God ministers to you and you sow not to the minister, not to the ministry, to the Spirit of God in thanksgiving for what he did, what he said. He said the life of the Spirit, the life of that word continues to produce in your life. Jesus taught us that when the word of God is sown in Mark 4, he said Satan comes immediately to steal the word out of the heart that it's sown into. God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I have discovered a divine principle. And I've put it to work for over 20 years. When you sow into the word of God, into a moment, the life of that word cannot be stolen from you. Sometimes you're in a service, you leave, and you get in an argument with somebody, uh, you get on the freeway, good Lord. And everything you got just goes. I want every person under the sound of my voice, whether you're here or there, I want you to get something and I want you to sow it into the anointing. As many of you as can, I want you to get a seed of 77 zero. If you're connected to this anointing, you know the significance of that seed. There is an impartation happening here. There's somebody watching me. The Spirit of God spoke to you about 20 minutes ago to sow a $500 seed. You're watching me. There's three pastors watching me right now. And when I spoke about being stuck, there's many more than that, but there are three of you watching me right now. When I spoke about being stuck somewhere, it's almost like the things that you've been trying to do in your ministry have been uh, obstructed and, 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 and hindered. And the Spirit of God is breaking you through. And God spoke to you to sow a seed. You need to do what He said. There are three of you watching me. God spoke to you to sow a thousand dollar seed. There are several others of you watching me. God spoke to you to sow something else. Whatever God said, so do it. And if you're in this room, again, I tell people all the time, if God says sow something, you don't have it, sow the very best you can. The Bible says if there first be a willing heart, it is accepted. Not according to what a man has not, but according to what he has. Now hear me. If you think this is a manipulation, don't do anything. Because I promise you, I don't need your money. God's going to supply our need no matter what. If he doesn't use you, he'll use somebody else. Why? Because I'm not trusting in people. I'm trusting in God and his word. But this is going to go into his anointing. And if you understand the significance, then I want you to do it. I'm done. Right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a way for you to do it just so. You can text if God is leading you to do that, whatever he says. Listen, if it's $70 or 70 cents, if you do what the Spirit of God directs you to do, the same favor will come on you because you acted on the Word of God. So I want you to sow. You can text me at CEMM to 41444. You can call the number on the screen. Many of you, my prayer ministers, are still there. And even when we go off, they'll be there for a few minutes to pray. If you need prayer, some of you just experienced a move of the spirit you need prayer call the number 310-323-2600 if you're giving here in the tabernacle the spirit of the lord is prompting you to sow something if you're making out a check CEMM is who you make it out to once again there are people already in the aisles sowing one of the things i love about this house is we don't have to work up giving we understand the principle we teach this is a giving house this is a generous house this is a people of givers and so when god speaks people do it i'm grateful for that but i want to encourage those of you that the spirit of god is speaking to to do it so if you're here if you're making out a check make it payable to see him if you're giving cash use the envelope once again if you want to do it on a bank or credit card get up right now just get up and go to one of these people in the aisles and so as God has directed you. Now, we're going to minister communion in just a moment. If you're watching me live streaming, 
If you don't have juice and crackers, you can get bread and water. We're going to bless it. The Bible says the bread which we bless, the cup which we bless, is how we partake and commune with the finished work of Jesus. We're going to do that in a couple of minutes. Let's worship God right now as the people give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. softly uh, I was I was just getting ready uh, to move and the Spirit of the Lord just impressed me that there's someone I don't know I believe you're here in the building I think believe you're here in the room you may be watching me but I, I believe you're here in the room there's someone here I believe you're a, a, a female and uh, you have an appointment in the next week or so with a physician that something something has been discovered that has given you great consternation. I don't know if what it is has, is that you? Ma'am, come here please. Kebari Ista. People of God, stretch your hands in this direction. I, uh, uh, come on, son. Uh, you didn't tell me anything. No way I would know. And it, it's this week? that it, Tomorrow. See, that's what I was hearing. I didn't want to say tomorrow. God is good. I was just about, I was just about, I was just about to finish. And the Lord said, there's, there's someone here. And he began to explain. And I heard tomorrow, but I, I was like, tomorrow, this week? It's tomorrow. Is it? Yeah, it's. The Lord sent you here. You're probably gonna remember me. Say it again. You're probably gonna remember me. I was at West Adam when the man passed and you raised him from the dead. You were there in that service. Yes, yeah, Cynthia, you're probably gonna remember me. Yeah. We so you were there with the kids and stuff. Yeah, you, you changed your hair. <laughs> Stretch your hands in this direction. He told me to come. You were going to pray for me. I was sitting there waiting. He told... Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Y'all are too normal for me. So, a la vez, so you watch her <laughs> so you said I just want to make sure I'm understanding 
You said the Lord told you to come here mm -hmm. and told you I would pray for you and you were waiting. Mm -hmm. And you didn't tell me. No. There's no way I would know. You didn't tell anybody. No. And I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm about to move on. And the spirit of the Lord says, there's a woman here that you were to pray for. Chad. Y'all are too normal for me. This is the work of the living Jesus. Uh, and I was, I was, I was here. I was trying to move on. I was doing minister communion, and I'm standing here. And the Spirit of the Lord says, "No, there's a woman here. Pray for." Her. I'm like, "God," I said, "She's here." say so and he showed me where it was lift your hands now <laughs> watch her watch her close your eyes lift your hands because the power of God is already moving on your body the fact watch her 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 Watch Ala Burra Kasata. Anita, come here quick, quick. Lay your hands on her here. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lay your hands here on her top. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> there it is. Stretch your hands and pray. Now the Lord told me here it's already done. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak soundness. I curse cyst tumors in the name of Jesus I command the thing dissolved now and I thank you no I need you praying give me 60 seconds of prayer El ambori andele va candele masse el rabo e sha el andorra masa. Father, I thank you for this miracle. I thank you when the doctors look, they will see nothing of alarm. I thank you, you give my sister a clean bill of health. I need you to lift your hands before the Lord. Now, I want you to hear me. Something was there and it's gone. When the doctors look, when the doctors look, they're going to say, yeah, we saw something, but it's not what we thought. But there was something. But the great physician just healed it. I want you on the count of three. I want you to thank God like that was your mother, your sister, your auntie. One, two, three. Thank God for this miracle. Thank God for the miracle. Now she'll come back and testify. But today, thank God for the miracle. Lift your, <laughs> lift your hands. Lift your hands. Take your glasses. Lift them.
that has ears to hear, let them hear. Sister, don't be a stranger. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. If you have the communion elements, let's minister communion. Look at your neighbor and tell them that is not the work of men. That is the work of the resurrected Jesus. And to Jesus be the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. with the Baptist, you know, we <laughs> Baptists had a sick and shut in list. If you were sick or shut in, they'd pray for you. But if you was in the house, you wasn't getting no prayer. I'll never forget what I learned about the power of confession. I said, you, know, you keep calling folks sick and shut in, they'll stay sick and shut in. It was a, when that anointing came on my life, and I'm going to use you to minister healing to the sick. And he said, as long, he said, I will do it as long as you make sure that when it happens, people know I do not do it so that men can be glorified. See, no man is the healer. Jesus is the healer. His spirit works through men and women who will be sensitive. He said, I will do it as long as you make sure that when it happens, people know I do not do it so that men can be glorified. I do it so that people will know that I am who I say I am and that I do what I say I do. I am savior. I am healer. I am deliverer. I am the prosperer. And there is none other beside me. Jesus is Lord. And when we come to minister communion, we do so in celebration. This is not just an ordinance. It's not just a sacrament. According to the scripture, it is the wisdom of God for the new creation. And the Lord said to me, this is one of the things that helps the new creation continue to function at optimum level. The Bible says that this is how we fellowship. The word there is koinonia, which means to become benefactors or receive benefaction, meaning that when we do this according to the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 11 and we rightly discern in the spirit what we're doing, there is literally, for lack of a better word, a download that comes from the Spirit of God into your physical body. Into your spirit, your mind, your will, your emotions. Paul said, not Clarence, Paul said, he said, when this happens, he said, because much of my church does this without discernment, he said, many are weak and many are sick and many sleep. What does 
does that mean? It means when this is done, understanding, it should release strength into people. Sickness should be healed. And death sentences should be canceled. Look at your neighbor and tell them there's no such thing as a chronic disease to the new creation. Look at your other neighbor and tell them there's no such thing as an incurable disease to the new creation. said this is my body given for you when we receive this bread and we take it we are receiving by faith that body that took our sin our sickness and our lack Paul says if you rightly discern the Lord's body something supernatural will happen lift that bread and say Lord I receive your finished work your body that took my sin took my sickness took my lack and poverty you were the atoning victim the one designated to take the penalty for me and heaven has recorded it is finished I receive it in Jesus name let's all eat together then the Bible says Jesus took the cup and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood once again he did not say it is his blood that's not what the Bible teaches he says it is the new covenant in other words when you do this it is an act of faith that you are in that new agreement in that new covenant what does that new covenant say well one of the aspects of it is recorded in Hebrews 8 where God says I will be merciful to your unrighteousness and your sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more look at your neighbor and tell him God does not have your failures on his mind he has taken care of that that's why he won't talk to you about it you ever notice when you go to God tell them how rotten you are he's silent he won't agree with that <laughs> he has made you a new creation somebody say amen to that Jesus said this cup is the new I say it again only with regard to the cup does he speak to the new? So when we take this cup, according to the revelation of the Spirit and the Word of God, when we take this cup, we are receiving the new. The Lord said to me, he said, whenever you do this, whatever situation you're dealing with, I want you to move to the other side of the situation. You there? Look at your neighbor and ask him, what are you dealing with? Where do you need victory? He said, when you drink this, start declaring you're on the other side of it. The victory side of it. People, this is not magic. This is the word of the living God. This is the power of God. This is what makes you peculiar. Not the length of your dress. Come on. Not whether your hair is blue or purple. No, that's not what makes you not a doily on your head. makes you look strange what makes you peculiar is that God has given you methodologies for victory that don't belong to other people 
I'm about to run through a wall. What makes you peculiar <laughs> is that you have been given access to things that people who do not know the Lord don't have access to. That's why God said through his prophet Isaiah, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way that you should go. That word, that word to profit there literally means who shows you how to get the advantage. I need to leave. I'm going to keep talking. Look at your neighbor and say you have the advantage all week. Look at this. No matter what you come up against, no matter what, you have the advantage all week. And tell them whatever faces you, God's going to show you how to get the advantage and win. Let's all drink together. Somebody say, I receive it. Say, I believe it. Now open your mouth and thank God for it. Do that real. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Has anybody been blessed today? Can you thank God for it? Come on, lift your hands right where you are, whether you're here or whether you're there. I want every person under the sound of my voice to lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the reconciler. You are the one that has made us one again with God the Father. I thank you that through your finished work, my sins are remitted, not just forgiven, they are done away with. And I declare that your resurrection is my receipt. It is my evidence that your sacrifice was accepted by God the Father. And because I believe in that finished work, I am accepted. In Jesus' name, I am a child of God. Clap your hands if you believe it. If you said it and you meant it, the work is done. Whether you're here or there, before you go to bed tonight, I want you to go to bishopmcclendon.com. Just write and let me know. You prayed the prayer that reconciles the soul to God. We want to continue praying with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now a hedge of protection in the north, the south, the east, and west. Around this people, their families, their households, and all they have on every side. I declare the angels of the Lord in camp round about them and they deliver them i decree everything their hand touch prospers and they continue to increase in the land which you give and the people said god bless you we'll see you by his grace at the place of grace amen